The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. I don't care how messed up your children are. I don't care how far from God they are. There's a well in your house. Somebody dug it, and if you'll dig, you're going to hit the water. I'm reading one verse of scripture today in verse 18 of Genesis chapter 26. And Isaac dug again the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them, speaking the, the, them is the wells, he called the wells by the names which his father had called them. Notice what he said. It said that he dug again, that Isaac dug again. I love that. He dug in the days of Abraham, his father. Isaac dug again the wells of water. And I want to talk to you for a few moments today on dig it. Turn to somebody and say dig it. I gave you a spoon when you came in today. How many of you have got your spoon Hold it up. Let me see your spoons all over the room at every campus. On, how many of you got your spoon? Well, I'm asking God today to turn your spoon into a shovel and transform it so that you can redig some wells that God wants to open up in your home and in your family. The wells that were supposed to refresh. And, re and revive with living water. The Bible said the Philistines, the enemy of God's people, stopped them up, clogged them up, filled them up with dirt. It actually says that. Once some translations say earth, but that's dirt. And therefore there was no way for a new generation, Isaac and his generation, they couldn't get to the water that the father Abraham and his generation had dug. And it lets you know that a well is a pit or a hole sunk into the earth to provide water. In other words, you can't get to the water unless you get down into the hole. And if you're in a hole today, in a low place, you're closer to the water than you've ever been. Wells in the Bible were important. They were hard to dig in ancient times. They didn't have drills. They didn't have the things that we have today with our modern technology. And so they were in a Middle Eastern terrain, desert, dry, hot, extremely hot. And it was a, it was a matter of life and death to find water. If you could find a well of water, you became very wealthy in Bible days. A well of water would be like an oil well to us today. And Abraham began to dig for water and he struck it. But he understood that the time and the energy and the expense that he put in digging for this well was not only for him and his wife and his generation, but Abraham understood that I'm digging a well for my son Isaac and his generation. My grandson, Jacob, in his generation. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 13 in verse 22, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Another way of saying that is a good church leaves an inheritance for their children's children. In other words, you're, you don't just need a good church, but your children need a good church and your children's children, and your children's children's children one day will need a good church. And we need to make sure that we have a perpetual spirit-filled church in every city where we have people that we want to reach. The thing that I love about the well that we're preaching about today is it had been flowing for about a hundred years and the well of water that I'm preaching about has been flowing for a long time. And there's a good chance that 
Those of you who are here, your children will be in the, drinking from this whale. And your grandchildren will be drinking from this whale. God's dream for this ministry is that it go from generation to generation. That it go from glory to glory. That it go from faith to faith. And every time we love truth and live it, we're securing a whale for the next generation. Genesis 26 and 18 said, when Abraham died, this is key, the Philistines waited until Abraham died and then they filled the wells with dirt. The water was still flowing, but they blocked it and barricaded it. And they said, now that the old man with the white hair and the long beard named Abraham, he, 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 he would fight for the whale. Some, some whales are worth fighting over. And we couldn't do it while he was alive. But now that he's dead, the new generation won't defend the whale. And we can just throw dirt in it. And we can serve mixed water. We can serve dirty water. We can serve, as a matter of fact, we can just dry the next generation out. And what I want you to understand is as soon as he died, they worked to cover up everything that he had accomplished. The old patriarch died. And I couldn't help but wonder in my mind, I wonder if the devil just sits on the sideline and he's waiting for some of the elders and some of the grandpas and grandmas and moms and dads and families to die out because they're committed and they got living water and they love the power and the, and, and the, and the water of the Holy Spirit, the river of the Holy Spirit. But the enemy knows that, that as soon as they die out, the well of that family, the family well will dry up because they can pour dirt in. They can dirty up the water. They can dirty up the worship. They can dirty up the doctrine. But I'm here to declare today that we are determined in this ministry that our children will drink from the same well that we drunk from. That our grandchildren will drink from the same well that we drank from. They don't need some watered down power of the Holy Spirit. They don't need some dirty water that's mixed with the world. What they need is one drink of living water and they'll never thirst again. They'll never thirst again. We need and we must have an Isaac generation that will get the shovel and let the enemy know that you're not going to take away everything the previous generation attained for us. I'm saying today that the devil would love when all these white heads die off for something to change in your family. He's doing everything he can to stop. The Bible said in Joshua, there arose another generation who knew not God or his mighty acts. We're in danger under the time that we're in. I know the power. My mom and my dad dug a well, and their parents dug wells. And for generations, three generations now, we've all been drinking, but the next generation, they are digging wells. And I'm not going to let that mess get in my house. In the name of Jesus, my grandchildren, four of them, and one day my great-grandchildren, they're going to have a well that I have dug through fasting and through prayer. And I keep getting the dirt out. Every time we fast, the Holy Spirit will bring the dirt up and he'll say, dish it out, shovel it out, get it out. Now you're going to feel the water again. The Bible said that he covered, they covered up the wells that Abraham named and Isaac redug those wells and he didn't change their names. I'm saying to you today that when you understand what I'm preaching, there's some things that we don't need to change the name to. The name that Wales represented somebody in a family who digs a whale and they would name it after that person. And somewhere in your family roots, there was a mother, there was a father, there was a grandparent, there was an aunt, there was an uncle. Somebody dug a well, and in heaven's 
memorial. Their name is on that well. That's why you couldn't stay where you were in sin. That's why you're sitting in a church this morning. Somebody dug a well. You don't even know why you keep coming, but they dug a well. And it's not that the water's still not there for the family. It's just you let the Philistines put too much dirt in. But if you will just start reaching out for God, if you'll just get that spoon and you'll say, God, I'm going to do some digging this week. I know there's some water. And before you know it, slosh, you're going to hit the river that your granny had because it's still there. Healing is still there. Revival is still there. Family household salvation is still there. I don't care how messed up your children are. I don't care how far from God they are. There's a well in your house. Somebody dug it. And if you'll dig, you're going to hit the water. You're going to hit the water. The problem is we've gotten used to drinking muddy water. And we've got to long to drink from those old wells again. Redig the wells and don't rename them. You still got to repent from sin and forsake your sin. And I'm not going to rename it for this generation. You still have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, baptized in water, and baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I'm not going to rename that well. You still got to come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And I'm not going to rename that well. There's only two destinations that you can be headed to in eternity. It's either heaven or it's hell. And I'm not going to rename it to be politically correct in the church and preach a cool whip gospel. You're going to heaven are you going to hell? You're living right or you're living wrong? You're a hypocrite or you're a sold out Christian with a cross on your back? But there is no middle ground and I'm not going to rename the whale. He said, I wish you were hot or I wish you were cold. But if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. If you're living in sin, you're a sinner and you're going to go to hell. And I'm not going to rename that well. I'm not mad. I don't hate you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. You can't have joy with one foot in the world, getting drunk half the time, getting high half the time, and then running to God on Sunday. It doesn't work that way. I'm not going to rename the well. And the reason you're not satisfied is you're not drinking pure water. You're drinking dirty water. Man, I feel like preaching. I'm telling you, this is real. What I got a hold of is real. What's in Acts chapter 2 is real. But you got to get the dirt out of your life. I want to give you a couple of whales, three of them, that we need to redig. We got to redig the well of worship at Free Chapel. We cannot lose the well of worship. We got to keep the worship opened up. We can't let the devil throw the dirt of pride and intimidation of what people will say. The only reason some of you don't raise your hands is because you're full of yourself and pride and intimidation. And the reason we got so many teen sickles is because we got so many popsicles. And if the teen sickles would see Pop raising his hands and praising God, then guess what? It would move down the line in the family. You don't have the luxury of not coming to church and worship in the 21st century. Demons are coming after your family. You better get you a censor of worship and start saying, devil, get out of my house. Get out of my children. Get out of my marriage. I'll worship my way to the throne of God and to the victory that Calvary has won. You got to redig the well of worship. Hell's told some of you, your children don't even come to church anymore. 
They don't even talk about God anymore. They ain't going to never come back to church. But you turn in that spoon into a shovel. And it looks like it's just a little thing instead of pudding, banana pudding. You getting the dirt out. Instead of chocolate cake. Instead of steak. Because I'd try to eat it with a spoon. That's how bad I want it. Despise not the day of small things. Because God told me to tell you that even if you haven't seen them and they won't come to church and you, they don't talk about God anymore, there's a river, there's a well in that family. And all it needs is an Isaac generation to start redigging the well of sacrifice. Sacrifice has been sacrificed in this generation. We don't want it to cost us anything. Easy, easy believism. We've abandoned sacrifice. God didn't stutter when he said, Abraham, take your boy to the, to the mountain and sacrifice him. It's a burnt offering to me. God didn't say, I suggest you do it. God didn't beat around the bush. God required it. You want to be blessed? It requires sacrifice. You want an anointing a thousand times stronger than you are today? It requires sacrifice. I've been preaching a long time, and I know the Bible pretty good. And I'm going to tell you, if I have to sacrifice, I can't lean on nothing in my past, no anointing from the past. All I can do is every year take the spoon and turn it into a shovel and say, get the dirt out, get the dirt out, get the earth out, get the carnality out, get the flesh out, and fill me again. Because I'm not just digging for me. But I'm digging for Courtney and Carissa, Caroline, Connor, Drake, Amelia, Colette, <laughs> Luca, Leo, my grandchildren, Ben and Tyler, my son-in-laws. They got to feel this. They got to experience this. Their children has got to experience this or it won't be real. This dirty water, this, this dirty worship, this mixture of the world and, and the spirit, it doesn't work. It's not, it's not powerful. And it requires sacrifice. God will Never take what you don't want. But he'll ask you for what you love. I'm preaching better than you're letting on, but I'm just going to tell you. Listen to this. God is not your garbage collector. God is not your goodwill store. Where you give him the time and the money and anything else that you have left over that you really don't want. This is not, this church is not a massage parlor to make you feel good. It's not a love boat. This is a battleship. And every now and then, it requires sacrifice. It requires you taking the, the, the shovel and saying, I'm getting the dirt of my own carnality out, and I'm going to sacrifice to God. And lastly, I'm going to redig the well of faith. Jesus said, when I come back, listen to the question he had. Will I still find earth, faith in the earth? In other words, will anybody be preaching healing anymore? Anointing with oil, laying on of hands. Will anybody be preaching the baptism in the Holy Ghost? Speaking with other tongues, prophesying. Will anybody be preaching miracles, signs, and wonders? Or will the church just be a bunch of professionals? Paul said, I do not come to you with enticing words 
of man's wisdom. But I come in demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's what we need desperately in this church. How do you, how do you unclog the well of faith? You get the dirt of unbelief and doubt out. I believe my children will be saved. I believe my body will be healed. I believe my finances will prosper and be blessed. God, you can do it. Say it, everybody. God, you can do it. Say it again. I believe. I want the dirt of unbelief out. I want the dirt of doubt out. Say, God, you can do it again. Some of you buried your faith. Lazarus died and his sisters and family put him in the tomb and buried their faith and said, it's too late. And some of you have children and grandchildren and it looks like they're dead spiritually. They don't talk about God anymore. They don't come to church anymore. But God knows how to move stones. Redig the well of faith. And you'll start saying, as for me and my house, I don't walk by what I see. I walk by what I hear. And I believe this over anything I see going on with any of my children. I've had, I'm living in victory in this area right now. Every one of my kids are loving God, serving God. I'm so thrilled and I'm so happy. But we fought hell. We fought demons. We fought devils. And I said it when I was going through it. As for me and my house, we were served. I reminded the devil. I would redig that well and say, you know what? You just have your heyday. But one day when this is over, those kids are going to torment you. One of these days, devil, I'm going to make you pay. One of these days, you're going to break out in a revival. Revival at Forward Conference and you're going to pour out your spirit on 14,000 teenagers at one time just because you mess with my children. Upon your sons and your daughters I will pour out my spirit. It's coming. Muddy water has become the norm. Powerless Pentecost has become the norm. When we have more deserts than we have downpours, we need to redig the well. When we have more perversion in the church than we do power, we need to redig the well. When we have more playboys in the pulpit than prophets, we need to redig the well. When we have more compromise than convictions. When's the last time you added to your conviction list? I know you, you've saved by grace and grace sets you free and you mark that off your conviction list and I, used, I can do that and I can do that. Well, when's the last time you added something to your conviction list? We need a fresh baptism of power. You'll never have a public, powerful manifestation of God's power and glory. You'll never have a public, powerful manifestation until you have a private conversation with God in prayer. Recently, a ministry partner that we have stood with for years and years in helping women called New Beginnings, their founder, Sharon Thompson, began to share with me uh, something that happened. How that a young girl, I think she was 14 years old, uh, had been sexually abused and had all kinds of issues that were going on in her life as a result of now addicted and the girl showed up at her ministry and they had nowhere to put someone that young and she began to cry, Sharon did, and she said, Pastor, we need a home for girls from the age of 12 to 17. If we don't rescue them, they will end up in sex trafficking, they will end up in addictions, they will end up in abusive relationships where they're beat and, 
and treated like trash. Please, Pastor, help me get a dorm for these girls. And I heard the Lord's voice in Sharon's voice because this is what the Lord told me to tell you. The scripture said, he then said, tell her, behold, you have, listen to these words, you have gone to all of this trouble for me. You have gone to all of this trouble for me. What can be done for you? Can something be communicated to the king for you? And she answered that she didn't really need anything. And Gehazi spoke up and said, she's never had a son. Jesus said, I'm going to ask you a question. What can I do for you? What do you need? Do you need a miracle in your home? I tell you, God's speaking to somebody right now. Do you need a miracle in your home? It happens when you provide a home for the homeless. I'm telling you today that urgently this dormitory for young girls is needed. The ages of 12 to 17, the odds are if we don't reach them then, only God knows where Satan will take them. This is one of the fastest growing addiction demographics in our nation. Satan says, I want these girls, they're mine. He's doing everything in his power to steal our daughters and our granddaughters, to destroy them before they reach adulthood. But you and I can restore them. And with the power of God's love, they can be healed. They can be restored. They can be shown their extreme high value in the eyes of God. And I promise you, girls' lives will be changed. Here's my announcer to tell you more. Alcohol and drug abuse is a devastating epidemic in the United States today, with young girls and women becoming the fastest growing demographic. Nearly 5 million women over the age of 12 have a substance abuse problem, and over 200,000 of them die each year due to their addictions. These women need your help. This month, we're partnering with New Beginnings to build a dormitory for teenage girls struggling with addiction. Your generosity will assist in building this new dorm, as well as giving recovery, hope, and the life-changing message of Jesus. For your gift of $35 or more, you'll receive Jensen Franklin's message, Your Failure is Not Final, and Custom Bookmark. With your gift of $300 or more, you'll also receive God's Masterpiece Journal and the Jensen Franklin Legacy Bible. With your generous seat of $1,000 or more, your name will be commemorated on a wall of recognition at New Beginnings, and you'll receive this special edition Legacy Bible. Your generosity will save countless lives of young girls by showing them the life-transforming love of Jesus. Visit us online today. This weekend is ours. Divine Conference 2019, featuring Don Cherie Wilkerson, Jensen Franklin, Lisa Turkhurst, Free Chapel Music, and more. Get tickets at divineconference.org or text Divine 2019 to 313131. This program has been sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.